Hey everybody, Kitty Paw here, and today we're going to be talking about Peter. Or, well, more specifically, Peter's manipulation. You know, I've gotten a huge interest in the game, and I just really just... I noticed little behaviors from Peter and his, you know, psychologically messed up thinking and stuff. So I really wanted to make a video about, you know, him specifically and what he does that indicate these behaviors. Um, I want to apologize in advance for any background noises. I'm kind of in like a tiny room with like lots of cars on the side. So it's, uh, yeah, sorry about that. Um, but anyway, I have played day two as well uh, since I am subscribed to the Patreon. So it was really hard to not add anything in that was also part of the Patreon, but I really tried my best. And I'm almost certain that I didn't put anything in from day two, so I tried my best to just keep it all day one. Um, so yeah, let's talk about it. So this video is going to be in sections. I'll be talking about the start of the day. Then I'll be talking about when you accept the dinner and the minor choices you can choose. Then I'll also be talking what happens if you don't accept the dinner and the minor options. And then also if you just are neutral on whether or not you accept the date. And also the end of the day. So if you're ready, grab some popcorn and a drink because this is gonna be a long one. Um, I had like a whole script written down and at the start, not gonna lie, there is like, I, I just put down like very tiny keywords and later I put like whole sentences down. So there's not gonna be a lot for the start of the day. I'm sorry about that. I, I didn't mean to go in depth like further. That's why it was so short at first. So yeah, bear with me. So start day one. First of all, he mentions family, or well, friends, and he's kind of showing off the vibes that he wants to know who you're meeting up with, which is kind of odd at first. Um, then, of course, he puts up a sweet guy act, but later on, like, I'm just skipping ahead, but later on, he does tend to get rather cocky and snappy, just not really that nice. So these are just our, like, first views on him already. He wants to know about your family, he's putting on a sweet guy act, you know, even though he changed up later, but we'll get into that later on. Uh, also, right off the bat, he obviously makes you believe he's your boyfriend. Well, I'm your boyfriend. So when you tell someone, you know, you're their boyfriend, it's a bit of an odd starter of a conversation. But in reality, when you think about it, you know, if you tell something enough, I believe in that. If you tell something enough to someone, they'll start believing it eventually. So just the fact that he starts off the conversation with, I'm your boyfriend, that's already part of a manipulation because you're starting to like make somebody think about something, you know. Then, not just the fact, does he know where you're working, but he mentions it's nice and quiet. Pointing to the fact does he, that he doesn't like to be around people a lot. Now, this may seem a bit of innocent. Like, I have some sentences in here that may sound like, you know, it's not that big of a deal. And, well, they kind of are. You know, why would you point out that the diner is nice and quiet? He obviously knows something about this diner. He's been there. You know, we'll later find out that he, you know, has a regular walk that also happens to be around the diner. But just the fact that he knows it's nice and quiet and he knows you work there and that there aren't a lot of people, it just, it's just weird, right? But he's just, yeah, he's just implying stuff already. Then he puts in cute and cheesy little remarks, making him seem like an adorable, dependable guy, whilst in fact he is not. Yeah, so... This is going to also be a thing that he's going to be doing a lot, which is putting in like cheesy or funny little things in between sentences sometimes to, you know, kind of lighten the mood or to, well, that's what you think, to lighten the mood. But in reality, he's just, you know, making him seem like a normal funny guy, because if there's one thing, people love funny people. That's just a fact. 
So he's just trying to, you know, get in your, you know, good book. And that's about it for the starting lines. Like I said, this is like way less in detail before than later. So you'll know that when you pick the choices, I actually wrote a lot on that. But if you do go to the date, dinner sounds nice, you go to the date. Then at the date, of course, he rushes in and he mentions that the sudden date asking could have been awkward. So he apologizes. However, he then switches it on you by saying, if it was for you, of course, rather than himself, implying that he didn't think so, which is very odd, you know, because he says that it could have been awkward, but then apologizes and then switches it on to you. Like, if it was for you, of course. So he didn't think it was awkward, right? That's what he's trying to say. So very important that. All right, now we're going into the real depth. If you pick the option, roses are nice, then if you accept the roses, the game says he watches you admire his gift while he's smiling. This could mean he's just pleased that you like it, but at the same time also hinting towards that he's mentally getting a grasp on you, since not to mention the flowers come from the same store you go to. He tells you that he walks by the diner, but doesn't have the courage to walk in and name himself a loser. This would seem like a bad dating trick. However, he is actually making you feel pity for him, confirmed by the reassuring hand pat afterwards and him immediately going back to smiling as if he wasn't faced at all. Here you get the option to choose his name. As some of you may know, his real name is Peter, but he doesn't like it at all. If you force it, he'll end up letting you call him Peter. But that's not what concerns me. Rather the line, won't you smile for me, Peter? I'm pretty sure in every route he smiles right after, as if he doesn't want to make a fuzz. He wants to make sure that everything is perfect and there are no odds between you two. And this will, you know, this stuff will appear later on in my theory as well. This is gonna appear a lot. Then, are we having a moment or what? I think this speaks for itself. He went from being an awkward shy guy who averted his eyes whilst talking to you, saying very something very bold, which you even apologize for, him claiming there's nothing to be sorry for. Again, reassuring that there are no odds. Mm-hmm. Now, the our first date and you're the one buying also seems rather innocent, unless you think about the implication here. Because of this, we tell he can pay on the next day, unconsciously. Now this is a keyword, because he is tricking us psychologically. We think we came up with this idea ourselves, when actually he played us into it. And this is a very common thing to happen in real life as well, where people, you know, for example, um, somebody's like, oh, I really want this, if only I had the money, and kind of look at you, and you're just like, oh, you know, Maybe I can give it to them, you know? Uh, see, it's because they give you that idea. It's not you. You're ju you were just standing there looking at the item, you know, you didn't know. But then this person you do comes along and, you know, puts words in your mouth, basically. Then, when you say the date wasn't a total disaster, it seems he doesn't actually agree with you. But instead says, but I don't want to argue with you. Just furthering my last point of him wanting to be no odds between you and him. And I'm telling you, it's common. It happens a lot with this guy. Like, you don't... Who says that? But I don't want to argue with you. That is not a normal thing to say. You know, and then our character, if I remember correctly, our character just like giggles it off, basically. But yeah, it was, it was, it was cute seeing him struggle with his words. I'm pretty sure that was what, she, what what our character said. And that's really messed up to think about, of that's how we're being played. Now, this is the part where you don't accept the rose and you're just gonna be a jerk to him. This whole section is actually just him being super desperate. Understandable because he really wants you to like him. So it starts off with him wanting to switch his gift for something else as you don't like it you know, to other flowers except for roses. Um, he, he, <laughs> he then also pays for your milkshake. I am so sorry, I, I'll 
pay for the milkshake. Because that our character is just like, I don't want it. I'm not gonna pay for this. You're gonna pay for this for making me wait. So he does, of course, uh, at the end of the date. <laughs> date. Once again, he mentions he walks by whilst you work. That's how he supposedly knows, but instead his trick backfires and leaves him apologizing again. He once again is playing the pity card and say he'll improve by going to a nicer place and being more punctual. Mentioning the fact that, first of all, he's willing to spend a lot of money and is also willing to change his personality. Which isn't weird because this isn't going to be the last time he changes it like the sudden bold remarks and such. Then, for some reason our character ends up giving him the benefit of the doubt and asks for his number. Here he states, I'll do much better next time. Which isn't strange, since it's obvious that he's tryharding at this point. But like, as in every other route, he isn't willing to share his name. But here specifically, he points out that he'd rather be called Cockbite than his real name. Now, if you do choose, choose to call him that, then even after teasing him several times, he doesn't mind. Rather, he starts to smile again. This is giving me mixed signals, because it could be because it's not his real name, but I think it's more so that you gave in to him. You accepted to call him something he put down. This is what gave him the confidence to ask you, so if I'm Cockbite, do I get to have a nickname for you too? Which is a strange thing to say after being teased in a not fun way. However, he does it back in a fun kind of way, like he's once again ignoring what's bad. Oh man, I'm sorry if I'm st stumbling all over my words. I have so much written down. I have so much to talk about. I'm honestly trying to keep in so much. It's hard. But what? No. This is the option of declining the date. When you refuse, he tells you he's getting mixed messages and claims, I mean, it doesn't make sense for you to come here and then not want me. It's obvious that in his world, you're already his. This comment creeps our character out enough to make them want to leave, but it definitely piqued interest, didn't it? Then, as you leave, he offers to walk you home. Our character declines and actually tells him he's creepy, which he completely shuts down as he was about to say the words, I love you, which our character, at this point in time, shuts down. Not sure what to do. However, it was a way of showing his affection in that moment to hopefully change your mind later on. Whilst we walk in the city, our character notices this may not be the healthiest of people, but maybe was acting like a jerk for leaving him on the spot back there, which is exactly what I meant before. If he hadn't said the creepy but sweet things he did, our character probably wouldn't have thought twice. Fancy seeing you here. That together with the sentence, I didn't know you shopped here too, leaves a bad taste. Because as we know, he's a stalker. And I don't know if our character frequences the shop, but I feel like it would be a part of his daily routine to walk by everywhere you go. Maybe he followed you there, or maybe he anticipated it. The chance of it being luck, uh, I'm not so sure. But him reaching for the same rose? <laughs> no way, Jose. He knew what he was doing. Putting a classic, oh, you dropped your books, I'll help you pick it up, hand touch moment. He tells you then, be quiet, when you assume he's followed you. I don't believe it's because it's a small shop, as he claims. Even though that seems believable enough for our character, I think it would put a dent in his plan if someone was yelling at him for being a stalker. Like, for real, like, if that happens in public, you're not just gonna, you know... Nobody's not gonna bat an eye if you just yell at someone for being a stalker and a creep. He then claims he comes there every day. We don't know if it's true, but I assume it is, as this guy seems to have a regular walking and doing routine. Therefore, by the comment we gave, he was hurt by it. Once again, our character thinks they're being a jerk, when in fact they are being manipulated by his at first sweet and innocent exterior. The that's not so bad option. In this, our character agrees with the thought before of being a jerk, since they may have been a mindless robot whilst, you know, going to work. However, this is what I meant. 
He got us to believe that he's not bad by playing the pity sweet guy card. Then the, I know you have no interest in me, but can we still see each other? Paired with, not on a date or anything, but just to hang out, is used in every situation that does turn out to be more, like for real. He says this to shake off the creepy idea you had of him before. He says this to shake off the creep idea you had of him before, of making everything he says now as normal and away from the whole boyfriend idea from before. He then offers to walk us home and we give him the sure, I guess option. Meaning you agree. I believe this is a test to see whether his nice guy act got accepted by you or not. By saying yes to his offer, he realizes that what he did was a good thing, which of course it isn't, but in his mind, he snuck into your good list. Therefore, he also offers you the rose, which isn't strange since he's rewarding you for you accepting him, if that makes sense. It's almost like a dog getting a treat for doing what it's supposed to. Naturally, you accept the gift, causing you to think about him more. Then, when you're about to step into your apartment, he halts you, immediately asking for when the next meetup would be, finished with a, when you have time, of course, which is smooth, considering the fact he doesn't want you to contact him at later times, but wants something right now. You then offer him to come by the dinner since you work all week. It's a slow day, so you could have a chat. Instead, he says, hmm, having me pose as a customer to extend your break time. This, from what I can tell, is not implied by you, but once again by him. In his mind, you'll make time to sit down and talk to him, seemingly extending your break time, even though this is not what you meant, more like a quick pit stop kind of thing. He then tells you he finds this act devious, and I like it, which, as I stated previous, is so far away from his so-called personality. At these times, he seems to show his true colors. I happen to have read that his favorite animals are snakes and cats. What are the slyest, deviest, and most mischievous of all? Those three, right there. Cats, snakes, and Peter. No thanks, which is the other option if you decline, you know, the walk home. However, I instantly notice that you see that he becomes sad when you do, but just a little. He's still smiling, and he snaps his fingers to get out of it, almost trying to make himself like the things about you that aren't working or fitting with his image of you. He mentions that you've rejected him twice, clearly making you think about what you've done, even though in reality, you haven't done anything. Since you rejected him, you also don't accept the flower. But since it hasn't been purchased yet, there's no big fuss. Instead, he walks with you outside. He then starts to talk off the idea of your break. However, you tell him that you can't talk a lot if he doesn't buy anything. To which he responds, Okay, I'll bring five bucks. Anything worth getting food poisoning from? With this malicious smile looking sprite. When that sprite is used, I can't help but think there's more of an intent than shown. Which would make sense after our character giggles straight after. He then gives us that satisfaction face. The face he uses every time he has successfully tricked or played us in one way or another. We'll see that a lot more often, I'm certain. You've been watching me? That's the option you choose when you reject him completely. So, here our character continues to call him out on his creepy behavior and wants none of it. Right after Peter says, it's not like that and reaches out to calm you down, luckily, before he gets to explain our character, already turns him down, <clears throat> as they should, and tells him not to touch them. This leaves us with the famous bloody hand scene, which he obviously got thanks to grasping onto the rose too tightly. This, in my opinion, indicates that he doesn't seem to really care for his own well-being at all. He wouldn't mind getting hurt, just to be with you. I'm certain someone could be beating him to death and he wouldn't mind. This scene may be short, but it shows his true feelings and already a start of what he is prepared to do. Now, you, I, you might be wondering or like thinking, 
Yo, that's a bit heavy of an implication there, but is it really though? I, re I don't really think so, because it would make sense to me if, you know, what, what somebody is willing to do in small, I wouldn't be surprised they'd be willing to do it in big. I mean, we already know that he wants to hurt, like, that he will hurt others, by, like, by the game description. So, it's a very possible possibility. And then we return to the park. But this time with a response, dot, dot, dot. After you don't respond to him, unsure of what to tell him, he immediately reassures you that he doesn't want to be your boyfriend. Rather, take the chance to ask you out. Now, here, our character seems to understand that there's something hidden behind those words. But not quite guilt-tripping, as they seem to think. Rather, manipulating. You then apologize, being tricked once more by his now normal and nice exterior. He then tells you that he gets it, making you believe he gets what you're thinking, which I guess in that aspect he does, since he's playing you. I'd be weirded out too if a stranger walked up to me and asked me out on a date. This? Proving my statement before. <laughs> then our character is suddenly flattered, but uneasy. Now flattered is the keyword here. Even though we're uneasy, we're flattered that he understands, which is part of his whole plan. You then call out that he didn't make a fuzz, definitely giving your character that ease that you didn't have before. He then leaves as if nothing happened, but in his mind, he knows that he left a mark for sure. Right after that, you just get the flower shop scene again. Um... So that brings us to the end of the day. Obviously, at each end of the day, our character goes to sleep after having said anything fitting to the route you took. And that's when we see Peter's silhouette. Now, this of course shows that he follows you and has more than a normal interest in you. But just the fact that he does so, even on the nights that you turn him down, concern me most. In day two, your actions have consequences, just like this one. But I can't imagine going down a road hating him. That could end very badly for you. No, not in the aspect of badly as in, you know, it won't work out with Peter, but badly in like an abuse-wise sense. Like he is willing to do whatever it takes to get you, even if you hate him. That is just for certain. So instead, you would go for the nicer option then, right? Just letting him flow and be with you? Well, that's all just part of the whole manipulation plan. Oh boy, have I been rambling for a long time, haven't I? I got some keywords, but there was just so much to talk about. I apologize for how long this is probably gonna be, but I hope you kind of understand where I'm coming from. I felt like, you know, this is pretty obvious signs and I may have sometimes strayed a bit from the manipulation and just pointing out you know some toxic behavior but I think you understand what I mean so let me know what you think down in the comments below I I'd love to hear your theories on you know Peter and stuff so yeah uh, if you want more of these I really hope that when day three comes out because this is the whole reason I'm making this video because you know to wait some time before day three. It's supposed to come out today, so I'm making this today. And uh, I just want to waste time. So yeah, just 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 um just tell me that if if we're able to, you know, say stuff about day two, if you'd want to see a video about that. Cause you know I'd love to make another one. This was super fun to, you know, write and talk about. So yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you around. Bye-bye.